Hi everyone, this is Rachel and I am gonna do a live art tour. So if you're tuning in, I hope that you have something to drink. So maybe some wine. Um, I'm gonna drink a little bit of some Dark Horse Cabernet Sauvignon and I have a little bit of chocolate. This is a mug that Franklin made actually in ceramics class. So um, it has a little chocolate in case Langston gets a little bored and needs a little um, chocolate relief because he loves chocolate. So welcome to my home and welcome to a live art tour. I'm going to be showing you my art on all of these different walls. I have um, abstracts, I have cut paper collage pieces, I also have some sculpture pieces that I'll be talking about. But before we get started, I wanted to um, just kind of introduce myself through my art. I actually started drawing at age four like most people. We all pretty much as, as a universal human experience draw as a little kid and then a lot of people um, actually stop drawing when they're in their teens and sometimes as adults people just kind of you know lose touch with that creative side or get discouraged because they feel like it's not looking right or it's not getting a lot of acceptance or attention so um i just kind of wanted to say that <clears throat> not only did i draw as a kid but i also fulfilled my terminal degree so I have a master of fine arts degree and um, some people wonder if I'm a self-taught artist or if I actually have formal training so to answer that question I actually paid for my most of my college tuition with my art talent so um, yeah I, I am formally trained so um, that's kind of you know something that some people don't know, they think that maybe I just started doing art in 2015 after um, everything kind of fell apart and I lost some of my other jobs, but actually I've been an artist my entire life and um, <clears throat> won a lot of awards for my art as well. So I had college scholarships, I did my Master of Fine Arts at Howard University, and then um, in addition to that, I showed at national competitions and exhibitions and so I won um, a dozen or so awards including the Michelangelo Award and including an exhibit at the United Nations headquarters in New York which was really amazing as a college student to have that honor. Um, <clears throat> so I've shown in 13 states in the United States. I've also exhibited my art in a couple other countries, some of some art has been displayed in the UK and in um, France. I have some art in a collection, as well as in South Africa. I've shown a little bit of my art, so um, I'm excited to just share with you the current work that I have available, and it's all on my website, racheldolezal.com. So um, I'd like to start first with this sculpture work, and. <clears throat> the methods that I use for sculpture are actually kind of varied. So this is a three-dimensional portrait bust, which is um, spoken for, but has not yet fully been purchased. So um, I'm just counting it in part of the live show tonight. It's actually done in plastilina clay, which is a non-hardening clay. And then these are elk hide bas relief sculptures, and they're actually very hard. So these are made with elk hide. And then there's a gold leaf finish on the surface. So you can see that the material is very hard. And I actually did a YouTube video about how I do this process. And you can see that um, each piece has a hanger on the back and they just easily can hang on a nail on the wall. So this is considered bas relief sculpture with that kind of, um, it's a three dimensional piece. It's sculpted, it comes into three dimensional space, but then there's a flat back to it 
where it mounts on the wall. This particular piece in here is, this is in a shadow box frame and um, it's called Redemption and it is basically a doll sized, you know, very miniature electric chair. And this piece is kind of uh, symbolic of abolishing the death penalty and you can kind of, um, you know, see that I've signed the bottom of the frame. The piece is made of wood and wire and a little bit of fabric for those little buckles around the wrists or the arm areas and the waist buckle. Um, but, you know, really just kind of the statement with this is that nobody could fit into this chair. You know, it's like it's so small that no human being could actually sit in that chair. So um, it, it kind of makes it um, speak to the fact, the fact that we should abolish the death penalty. So these are my sculpted works that I have remaining available. And um, something that people were requesting today is to see some of the cut paper collage work. So this is um, the wall that has a lot of the cut paper work. This is one of my more recent pieces. Um, you can see that these have a gloss varnish. So they have a little bit of a sheen to the surface. And this particular piece, these are all actually on canvas. So um, they're on a stretched canvas, but they are made of hundreds of tiny pieces of cut paper. So all of that is pieced together to create this image. And this is kind of just reminiscent of the times that we're in at the moment. Um, there are all these people outside, but this particular individual is sheltering in place. It's called Sheltered in Place. So that's the title of it. Um, it's basically kind of the feeling of being isolated from the public, which a lot of us are feeling at this moment. And kind of the, the idea of the world going on outside and the crowd is actually pieced together from different countries, Philippines, Czech Republic, different countries to make that whole scene. And then on the wall, there are a lot of questions about faith, about existence, about God, about different religions that are kind of written on this wall behind um, this child who is holding a deck of cards and has a drink that's been consumed. This piece is universal because it could be, honestly, he could be in any country. Um, and, you know, it's not specific to the United States what's going on right now with the coronavirus pandemic. It's going on in many countries. So that particular piece is kind of a universal image. And then this one actually has glass on it. This piece is called Baptism. So it's going to be a little bit hard to show you because I don't have a great light source for it, but um, it's a framed, beautiful piece. You can find this on my website. Um, some of the pieces that are a little bit easier to display without the, the glass are um, this one. This is called Dissoluble, and this is basically about mortality. You can see that the the child figure is dissolving into the background, which is basically a um, scene with a lot of different cave paintings and historical references. And kind of, uh, there's this door with several locks on the door. And again, these are pieced together. My cut paper process I show, actually I have a tutorial for that as well, um, that shows the process of making this piece, Aberration. And Apparition is a piece about feeling uh, like an outsider. This particular uh, dragon figure is kind of the outsider in this piece. And then uh, the workers are um, out in the field and kind of just feeling like an observer of society, looking at um, the world from kind of an outsider perspective. And then over here, some other cut paper pieces. Um, this particular piece is called Structure and Time. 
and is made from, I think I actually counted the pieces in this one, it's like 1,100 pieces. And I really love the depth of that, you know, the storm clouds and that kind of, you know, landscape, three-dimensional um, pole there with the depth of that piece. And then these pillars kind of represent my three sons. So it's kind of like um, the three pillars that have stood the test of time and um, all of the, you know, kind of storm clouds and the desert scene that has worn away, but uh, those pillars are still standing. This is kind of a unique piece and forgive the, <laughs> the heat thermometer over there. Um, this is basically, it's a black and white, which is kind of unusual. I don't do a lot of black and white cut paper pieces, but I really did that to underscore the historical references in this piece. And um, it's called Death by Mascot. So the kind of cowboyish figure is about to fall off of the horse um, as the stampede of bison are coming toward him. And it's almost like out of the Lion King video or movie. I don't know if y'all remember that like scene where the bias of the stampede was going into the gorge. So that's kind of what's what's happening in this scene, kind of like the death of Western um, ideals and also the death by mascot being like there's kind of a bull here on the, above the hoop. And so that's kind of like a, a mascot type of figure. Sorry, Langston's, um... Langston, come inside, come inside. <laughs> There's actually a dust storm going on outside. Langston is outside uh, playing and we just got a dust storm warning. So sorry about that little interruption. He was having a great time and then now he kind of got a little bit scared. So um, anyway, so Death by Mascot is a black and white cut paper piece and I sign all of my cut paper pieces of course and these are all on canvas with the exception of the one that's framed because it's on watercolor paper it's under the glass so all right so moving on um i want to show you some of my portraits i think this is probably what stood out to people in the netflix documentary and there i still get a lot of um, comments this is one of my recent self portraits on eggshells um, that a collector in France has expressed interest in. Again, it's kind of been spoken for, but it hasn't been paid for yet. So first come, first serve with that. Um, this is a recent drawing that I did about the COVID crisis. And um, this is a graphite pencil drawing. The eggshells represent like vulnerability and um, fragility and things like that. So I really love that texture. This is a canvas painting done with gold. You can kind of see the shimmering of the gold um, on the background. Of course, that's Serena Williams. And um, so someone who was asking price, this particular one on eggshells is 550. Um, these little drawings here are just $75. So a lot of the prices really vary. I believe the Serena one is 450. This is a painting of Isaiah when he was little and he will not let me sell it. <laughs> so he um, is wanting to keep that for his house someday. And I've, I actually did that when I was in college and it's on elk hide. It's a painting on elk hide instead of a sculpture on elk hide. So um, elk hide of course is leather. It's the skin of an elk. Um, this little drawing of Langston, again, it's a little bit hard to see because it's under glass. It's framed under glass but that's a graphite drawing that is available as well as this piece, which is um, kind of done with watercolor and pen and ink, but it's, a, it's still considered a drawing and it's called The Mourners. I'm trying to get a better, a better angle on it for you. It's a really kind of smaller piece, but I love that piece. It's very sketchy. It's very kind of expressive. And it's, it's kind of about the time when there's a funeral, when people kind of gather for the departure of a loved one. It's in a really beautiful little frame too. Um, <clears throat> it's like a funeral, although it's grieving somebody passing on, it's also bringing people together 
that are still alive. So that's kind of the, the idea of that one. This is another wall that I have more cut paper pieces. So um, this is a kind of brightly colored one. I love the frame on this as well. Um, this is a little landscape painting. This is another cut paper piece, as well as these over here. And again, sorry about the lighting. I have to kind of switch, switch sides here and maybe turn that light off a little bit to see this piece. Um, I really love the, the mat and frame on that one as well. So, and then this is just, obviously this isn't my art. This is just a little photograph of Franklin and I at a, <laughs> at a theme park. He was, he was dressed up as a little um, Union soldier kissing me on the cheek, but anyway. So those are all some of the cut paper pieces and some of these are really beautifully framed. Um, I love the, the treatment on all of the frames. I'm not able to frame all of my work just simply because it is very costly to frame and some of the pieces have um, you know a few hundred dollars or more invested in a frame and then if it doesn't sell then that's just kind of money that is left hanging a little bit. I'm going to take just a short little walk to the art studio. We live in a two-bedroom house so I have one bedroom that's for me and Langston, and then the whole basement is Franklin's man cave and bedroom, but the second bedroom is actually my art studio, and I'm working on a couple commissions right now. This is a big um, <clears throat> 24 by 36 painting that I'm working on. Um, this piece is from the documentary. Some of you probably remember it. I actually am fixing it to, um, like I, I took the black and blue paint off the face, but I kind of left the idea of pain in a black, a different kind of black and blue um, idea of kind of a bruise on the cheek, just that, you know, I've been through some pain. So anyway, um, um, so yeah, this is the, the um, this is kind of like the reference photo for this piece. And again, I haven't really finished the um, suit on that. This is a canvas that I'm getting ready to paint a double portrait of a couple on. And then this is a canvas I just started and it's um, a commission portrait, another commission portrait. So it's of um, a woman and kind of like a Wonder Woman pose. And um, there's, my, there's my book cover that the publisher sent like a framed canvas of the cover of my book and then here's my big box box pile in my studio so that's my little art studio I've got several projects underway and then this is my wall with abstracts Langston I don't know if you want to go outside I think it's kind of raining oh, he's gonna try and brave it a little bit so <clears throat> so these abstracts are are all very textural. I like to express when I when I feel like there's more of just a, a vibe or um, something that I want to do with just colors or light and dark contrast. Um, the little couple here, it looks like two people walking almost like in a city at night with rain. But I actually didn't intend for anything representational. So that's kind of a little happy accident of that couple emerging in the painting this piece is called three cats and three kites so there are um, three cats in the piece that you're supposed to kind of you know look for and <clears throat> kind of find and franklin always says that it, all he sees is the fish reading a book <laughs> so with abstract art one of the interesting things is that everybody sees something different because there's not as literal of imagery um, in the pieces there's definitely the opportunity to create with your imagination um, in terms of the meaning of the piece. Nice and it's so windy outside. Woo, it's a big storm. Let's stay in, okay? Would you like some chocolate? Now's the time for, for chocolate bribery. Nice and, ooh, chocolate. 
<laughs> Look, he's he's happy about he's happy about that. You like the chocolate? <laughs> um, this particular piece I really love. I love the details. The frame is gorgeous. It's got a lot of great kind of raw texture in it, and the title of it is "Made for Error." And there's kind of like a an anatomical section here. So there's some medical referencing, there's some kind of sexual referencing, um, some oppression referencing. There are kind of a lot of different references in this. And the overall um, color scheme is red, white, and blue with some yellow, you know, so kind of primary colors for that one. And as soon as I get done touring, of course, I'm gonna take questions. <laughs> So this is one of the landscapes that I have still available. It's called Thin Hope. And the Thin Hope represented by those two little telephone wires kind of disappearing into the trees that either sunrise or sunset. I, I always kind of think of it as more of a sunrise color. Um, this particular piece is called Crossing. And um, it's kind of actually about being on the verge of kind of like contemplating ending your life and like as this person is contemplating stepping into the street as the car is coming um so all those telephone poles in the background are representing crosses and it's it's kind of a little bit um introspective but i really like the moodier kind of images Obviously, my all my art has that kind of vibe to it. This piece is called Mirror, and it's a little bit more Picasso-esque, um, very abstract. And then on this wall, we've got more abstracts. I really love this. This is one of my favorite um, pieces. It's called Black Lines, and it's just got like little teeny touches of this light ultramarine blue amidst the yellow and black and white and then this one is called um noir et blanc which is of course black and white in french and again has some great you know detail and these are very glossy so you can see that that sheen on them this is another landscape painting it's called gray sky and this is called in the crowd and i kind of feel like this is like a mother figure and these are kind of like two little kid figures but of course it's very abstract and um, lots of little micro detail with the dripping of the paint and this piece is called ode to a pear and this is all inspired by the colors of a pear sliced open as well as the peel of the pear And this particular piece actually is not the only, it's the only art piece that I have that's not mine, that I didn't create. Um, it's not necessarily like for sale, but it's, it's actually done by a Hungarian artist and I was the model for the piece. She created this as part of an exhibition years ago, long before 2015. It was about um, kind of just switching up skin tones on people and so she did me in green and red which i thought was interesting and um <clears throat> she kind of was exploring identity and ethnicity and features and i had my faux locks in at the time so i kind of had those all wrapped up so um i i have one more little wall and then i will be happy to take questions and return to any pieces that you might want to see a little bit more of so these are pieces these are three abstracts that i actually created um this spring and i really love the chartreuse you can see they're super shiny super glossy varnish on these they're almost like resin uh, this is called wilted flowers and this is called lost vibes and then um We've got this one up here. Ah, it's hard to reach to see all of those, but so I just love the kind of bright colors and you can tell that there's a difference in either like having a classical feel to a piece 
in a space, in a home or office space versus having kind of like the brighter colors. It brings a different energy to the room, to the environment. So, um, you know, it's, it's all up to the individual. There's no right or wrong in terms of style. But as you can see with my art, I do kind of explore a wide range of styles, a wide range of subject matters. And um, yeah, I'd be happy to kind of talk a little bit more just about <clears throat> some of the art pieces. I also wanted to just mention, I still have my art calendar. This is next month is gonna be June, which um, it does really have nice replications of um, art pieces. You know, it's a very nice replication of that particular collage for for June. Um, the art calendars are also on my website, as are signed copies of my book and signed copies of my children's book, which has um, also illustrations that I have done. You know, it's kind of an, an art book and a doll that stands up. Um, <clears throat> this is, I made this for my sister when she was little. So it has changeable hairstyles, so the hair attaches to the doll instead of changeable clothing. It's got changeable hairstyles. So that is the book Ebony Tresses. So that's also on my website. So anyway, does anybody have any questions or comments or is there any, any piece that you would like to see one more time? Um, yeah, I'm ready for questions now. I saw somebody kind of remind everyone about that. Sorry that it took, it was a whole 27 minutes of me touring through the art, but I wanted to just make sure to show you everything before taking questions so that um, those who really wanted to just see every piece that I have on hand at least could get that first look before um, I was entertaining some questions, so. Sorry about background noise. Hopefully um, you understand with Langston. So uh, question from Francie, do you just go by instinct or are there rules on composition? There are definitely rules on composition. Um, I, I really believe in that kind of um, golden mean, the golden section. You'll notice in a lot of my compositions, even the abstract ones, I have a focal point in that golden section kind of space. Um, and even in my sculpture, I tend to be asymmetrical. Um, even something that would be a little bit more symmetrical is still, you know, if you divide it in half, it, it has a difference on both sides. So yeah, I could talk about composition for a long time. Um, let me scroll back. I know somebody had mentioned, um, <laughs> Yeah, it is hard to juggle the camera and talk and um, hoping that Langston isn't too big of a distraction for everybody. Okay, let me see. Somebody said Myrtle Beach. You wanted to see the Myrtle Beach one again. So this is the little Myrtle Beach canvas and it has a nice varnish on it. It's also, um, you know, gallery wrap. All my canvases are gallery wrapped so that you can actually just <clears throat> display them without a frame or you can choose to frame them as well. So let me, <laughs> let me go back and see um, what inspires my art. Many different things, but in, in short, it's just life and the human experience and um, feelings that I have, experiences that I have. Um, so Bruno asks, is that Sonny Francis? Yes, it is. <laughs> Actually, um, one of his family members, he recently passed away in February, so one of his family members commissioned that portrait. Um, so good eye. I'm glad that you recognized who that was. Um, Rick says, your hair looks great. Thank you. I actually cut, cut myself a little fringe on my, on my weave here. <laughs> for quarantine, everybody was trying to 
um, you know, do their own haircuts, which of course, doing my own hair is nothing new to me, but anyway. Um, do I still have rejected? Yes, actually, you know, so Franklin told me, <laughs> So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that because I do have it. And he has it in his bedroom because it's his favorite piece. And he made me promise that I wasn't gonna tell anybody it was still for sale. But I told him, you know, bills have to be paid. <laughs> so this is rejection. And it's in a very, like it has a very nice frame to it. And this is the one with the banana and the apple and the Oreo cookies and the brown paper bag and also um, the fabric behind. So that piece actually represents a lot more than just food though, because it, it's kind of a, an assortment of uh, racial slurs for rejection. So the apple would be um, a racial slur, what some people get called being native, but really white on the inside. Um, if they're like assimilated or cultured to European culture, the banana is sometimes what an adopted Asian kid would be called um, if they were adopted into a white family. I have to apologize because his bedroom is not a good, <laughs> a good lighting situation. So I'm going to just carry this upstairs. Obviously, the man cave is not made for, um, you know, art display. But yes, so this is uh, rejection. Can see it a little bit better now that we're upstairs and it has this beautiful italian frame on it as well and is gallery wrapped with the hanging wire so yeah thank you for that question great job on it's almost like an easter egg hunt like what one piece is there that she didn't show so all right let me go back to the comments and i I'm super sorry if, oh, thank you, Roland. Thank you for the, um, the super, super chat gift. I love that. Hold on, I'm trying to scroll back. I know, right? I really do hope that um, Sonny rests in peace and it's an honor to be able to work on his portrait. All right. Um, <laughs> Man needs his cave. Am I still creating art daily? Whew. Every day that I can, yes. But of course I've got this nice um, bundle of joy here <laughs> who keeps me busy. And we've got the online schooling going on for Franklin too right now. And so it's definitely just a busy time with the kids schooling. And if I'm selling art or processing orders, sometimes I don't get to create uh, my own art in a day, but I do have all of those commission pieces in the studio. So <clears throat> I'm trying to, you know, always keep on top of those pieces. Um, somebody said good night. <laughs> I'm that, I know I'm, I know I can be a little bit boring, so it's fine if you need to, if you need to leave. Yeah, there's no football. There's also no track um, for the kids right now. So Franklin has, you know, no track, no prom, no graduation. Langston decided that he wanted to go um, try and <laughs> look at this, this painting a little bit closer. So I've just got to like put it up out of, out of the way for him. So yeah. Um, let me see. Sorry, I'm getting behind on the questions a little bit. So Francie, yes, I have a studio room. I don't know if you just logged in. I had shown the studio room earlier. So this is my, this is my studio room here. And this is actually a piece that, a big piece that I'm working on. I do work large from time to time. But uh, this is a little sketch for it. I know it looks a little bit morbid, but anyway, it's going to be called She Died Standing, and it's kind of a um, somebody who has burned at the stake um, standing, you know, that still has not fallen amidst the, the ashes, so. All right, let me, let me go back again. For some reason, my screen is not 
not working. Any plans of putting my art into a book? I would love to do that. Un unfortunately, I don't have the funds right now to self-publish much more. Of course, I put um, my the portraits of my sister in, <clears throat> in this book. There are several portraits of her throughout the Ebony Tresses book. Um, but I don't have like that kind of coffee table book of art. I think that would be an awesome idea. I also do have some art in my in my memoir. I have a full color insert and there are some images of my art, you know, in the memoir as well. So yeah. You get the memoir, you have a few little teeny prints of art in there, <laughs> kind of pro bono. So all right, let me grab, go back here just a second. Um, ah, scroll. Do I have a studio room? Is he got a hoop in the yard? No, we don't have any any hoops in the yard here. Actually, none of my sons so far have been super interested in playing basketball. My first, my oldest plays baseball. He was really awesome at baseball, and um, my second son, Franklin played football and runs track and little Langston loves to jump on his trampoline. So we don't know what he's going to do yet for sports, but hopefully something. Um, <clears throat> I saw pilot Pete said that you like the cooking videos. Thank you for that. Yeah. I've had a few people, um, mention, you know, the idea of me doing a coffee table book of art. So I, I definitely want to try that out. Um, can I draw a Tupac portrait? I can draw any kind of portrait. Um, I haven't done a Tupac one yet, but I have definitely done some kind of um, gilded portraits in little series. I did one of Madam C.J. Walker, one of Frederick Douglass recently that kind of, um, you know, in the, I think there are three by three little miniatures. So, yeah. <clears throat> what are, who are my favorite artists? I have several favorite artists. I love um, Henry Asawa Tanner. I love his work. I also, yes, my book's on Amazon. It's also on Barnes & Noble and on my website, racheldolezal.com. You can get an, a signed copy, an autographed copy on my site. Um, other favorite artists would include, I really like the Baroque period, so I really like Caravaggio and Artemisia Gentileschi. I like that strong lighting contrast with the dark backgrounds and some of my work um <clears throat> like like this piece here like that kind of moody lighting i really like that like it just kind of like speaks to me so um hi from the uk oh my gosh kyra i can't believe you're awake over there in the uk <laughs> we facetimed with isaiah earlier and he said he could not um <laughs> You know, he, he couldn't stay up for this because it was just so, so late there. I'm sorry about the whole big time difference, but what is it, like two or three in the morning probably over there? Um, <clears throat> let me see another comment here. Do you plan on starting another channel for Strictly Cooking and one just for my art? Um, you know, I think that that would be a great idea. I've done that on my Instagram. I have a hair page and an art page. But I feel like I'm juggling so much because I'm just a one-person team <laughs> making the art, shipping the art, um, posting the art, um, trying to get back into doing hair. But of course, we are still shut down in Washington State. We just got notice that the May 4th deadline um, or open up um, date is now switched to, I think, the end of May. So... I'm looking at reopening for a hair in June, which is long ways off. So um, I'm doing the best I can. I don't even really get a weekly new video on this channel. And so I feel just like I'm kind of behind on everything, but I'm trying to just keep everything kind of going. Um, you know, all the little pieces, kind of juggling all the little pieces. And this is of course the most important piece, huh Langston? <laughs> um, do you ever feel immobilized as far as doing art, cleaning house, etc.? 
Um, hi from India. It's probably super um, early in the morning over there or super late at night or something big time difference. So thank you for tuning in um, from the UK and from India, both. I don't necessarily feel immobilized, but I do have days when I feel overwhelmed and I typically just keep kind of a rolling to-do list. So I have things that I've got to do in a day, things that I want to do that week, <clears throat> things that I want to do every month. And sorry, I feel like I'm shouting a little bit just because I want to make sure that you can hear me since I'm holding my phone, you know, far away and Langston's uh, making some noise in the background. But yeah, I don't necessarily feel immobilized. I just, I just feel like there's always a lot to do. And let's just say that I'm never bored um, working from home. And even when I had hair clients coming here and um, producing art from here and all of that, as well as the kids, it's just, it's just always very busy. And um, I hope someday to have a job. I hope to get back to teaching and back to advocacy work because that's my number one passion but behind the scenes of whatever other jobs i've had throughout my entire life i've always been an artist and produced art so good night bruno thanks for joining and um let me see here so roland says rejection is my favorite <laughs> Uh, because of what it represents, the paper bag, Asian, Black, Native American, and all. I was thinking of, um, <clears throat> sorry, ah, come back. I couldn't finish reading that comment um, of buying it later if it's still available, but I don't want to take, you know, you can definitely buy a rejection. Okay, this is the thing. So because Isaiah um, wants me to keep this piece because it's of him and it's, um, you know, his favorite piece. He has a bow tie. This is the age when he first wanted to be a lawyer, um, et cetera. That's why Franklin wants to keep the rejection painting because it's the most expensive piece that I have for sale right now. And I think he just wants something that he can say that he's keeping. But um, to tell you the truth, I will be painting a lot more in the future. And I think Franklin... Um, will probably fall in love with something even more than that piece, although he loves apples, but yeah. Definitely feel free to buy any of the art that is listed on my website. Um, I do ship to India and to international countries um, outside of North America. This is the deal with shipping though. On my website, there's a flat rate of $10 shipping for anything. You can buy all this art and have it all shipped to you. With, if you're in Canada, or any of the United States and North America um, for 10 bucks, you know? So I have just a flat rate. That's just because my website um, is kind of simple. It's, I don't like it to be super complicated <laughs> because like my YouTube channel, um, I don't have it all subdivided. It's just a matter of time. So to customize shipping on there is, is difficult for all of the variables internationally. So what I do for international shipments, I do do them, um, is basically you can just send me an email or message on my website through the contact form and just say like, hey, I'm, I'm in India and I would love to have, you know, Death by Mascot, for example, and then <clears throat> give me your address and I will come up with a custom shipping estimate for you. I'll email you back with that and then you can decide if that's, you know, something that you want to still do depending on the cost. If it's, if it sounds too expensive to ship it, that's fine. No worries. Um, I shipped a big piece to France and it was like $700. I've shipped other pieces to the UK for like 30 bucks. So it depends on the size. Um, and with my book too, like some people can't get my book in other countries. I can ship anything to you. Um, it's just a matter of you paying the customs when it arrives and of course the shipping costs. So I just run a, I just do a custom um, shipping estimate. So it's, it's not too hard, it's pretty easy. So it's definitely out there as an option. And then are prints of my art available? Yes, definitely. Hold on, let me see. I think I, I missed like a whole bunch of comments here. Sorry, how do I stay so positive? 
Well, that doesn't always happen. It's mostly um, Langston that keeps me positive here and, and some wine from time to time, you know, so. Um, let me see, a lot of us are here in South Carolina. Um, thank you for the love from South Carolina. Will you continue to do like more DIY nail work and mommy duties and whatever? Um, yes, I will definitely try my best to keep loading some more of those videos. Okay, so um, make ch -ch -ch. Rachel, you make HP Lovecraft kinds of paintings. I'm not sure what that means, so. Jay, if you can um, <laughs> rephrase that. So my prints, just so that you can kind of see, um, I'm trying to see, I don't even know which one this is, but yeah, so <clears throat> these, this is an example of a, um, a print. Let me see if I can find a way to show this to you, just because I do want to answer that question. Sorry for the for the little um, situation here with my camera. I'm trying to put my camera on a tripod so that I can kind of show you a, a print. So, um, these are done on satin paper. So they're really beautiful. This one's called Lord of the Flies. And I have, I believe, over 80 prints. This is a cut paper piece. The original is made with cut paper, <clears throat> which you can see. A lot of the cut paper pieces almost look like somebody like hit a piece of glass with a hammer or something and just it, the image just kind of fractured because it's all um, little pieces. It's really hard to like open this up. I told Franklin he needed to be here tonight, but he is... Um, over at a friend's house. So I have no help to kind of like hold these things open. But anyway, my, all of my sign prints, so I, I write the title on the image and then sign, um, I write the number as well. So they're signed and numbered. Um, so the signature is there on the bottom. And then what I do is I actually put these in a mailer tube and they go out in a nice thick cardboard tube. So that's that's kind of what happens with the sign prints. Sorry for that. <laughs> Sorry for the camera um, stuff being weird. Thank you for, oh, thanks Cleveland for the little, little um, super chat. <laughs> Have any celebrities bought your paintings yet? Um, only one and it's, you know, I signed an NDA, and so I cannot tell you who that is. <laughs> but actually, anybody can buy my art on my website, and so that's that's not a huge a huge deal. Hi, Muffy. Do you know how to do sculptures like statues? Maybe you just tuned in because yes, I do have sculpture work. This is a bust. Um, my major, actually, with my Master of Fine Arts degree, interestingly enough my major was sculpture. So my minor was painting. And right now I just so happen to do more of the painting and collage work and drawing and things like that because I'm, I'm shipping a lot of work. Sculptures are very heavy, very awkward to ship, very expensive to ship. And also you get into the need for um, kind of more of like a, a workshop, more of like a dirty space typically to do sculptures. Like it creates more of a mess with the clay, with plaster, with mixing things. It's, it's just like the three-dimensional arts are very messy and I don't have a space. Like my my studio here has, um, <clears throat> has hardwood floors and so that would not be a great... Being a, you know, doing sculpture in my... Um, home studio would probably not be favorable to like my landlord. My landlord would probably hate that. So yes, I do sculpture, but um, you know, I just don't have a lot of it available. My last piece, like I said, the last piece that I had a figure sculpture of 
it was actually in a shadow box frame and it sold. But I do still have this piece, which is three dimensional. This piece, which um, is not on my website because um, somebody wanted to buy it and I wrote them an invoice. If they don't actually follow through and purchase it, I will put it on my website though. And then um, these are all, all bas relief. And so that, that's another, um, you know, that'd still be listed as sculpture in an art gallery because it's, it's a sculpture medium as opposed to painting or drawing or something else. So um, how much for the finished self-portrait? So I'm not quite finished with it because I still have all the, the beads in that necklace to do. Um, I kind of wanted to save that for my kids, so I haven't put that up for sale yet. Uh, if, you know, that's kind of like part of their inheritance. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like one of them will maybe want a um, portrait of mom at some point. Do you want to go outside, Langston? Langston just got to check on the situation. Looks like the dust storm has uh, calmed down a bit. So, do you do commission artwork? Yes, I do commission artwork. That's what all the stuff in my studio actually is right now. All of these are commissions. This is, you know, this piece is a commission. Um, this piece is a commission over here, as is that one. And this little um, pink canvas here is actually also a commission painting that I'm starting. Um, so I just got the, the canvas toned. So usually you wanna do a, a tone to the canvas before you start painting it. So I have four commissions that I'm currently working on, but I just do a kind of first come first serve um, schedule for commissions. And <laughs> Little Langston keeps me so busy. He just, he just keeps wanting outside and inside. Um, so let me just back up just a little bit. Do you do customized painting? Da, da, da. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little behind on the, the positive comments. And wasn't the face of the self-portrait from the documentary painted over? Um, yes, it was actually, and I did wipe that off like I removed the the black and blue paint over the face and then um you know like I said I I um in, instead of having like that black and blue mark over the face I actually just kind of um turned it into a little bit of kind of a bruised cheekbone and I'm not finished with it I still have um got a little bit closer you can see I have all this work to do in the necklace haven't really finished the skin tones yet. Um, part of the part of the headscarf is still the earrings are undone. So I'm still working on it. That just you know as as with most parts of motherhood, <laughs> um, you put yourself a little bit last. You know you put your kids first. And in the case of my art, I put the work that I'm doing for other people first because that's what is the bread and butter work. And um, you know, my little self-portrait is kind of just like a work in progress that that just keeps keeps going. So um, that is kind of yeah, that's the that's the situation with that self-portrait. So it's I'll finish it definitely and um, put it out there into the world. Did anybody want to see any of the? Um, oh, thank you for the the compliment on the necklace on the self portrait. Did anybody want to see any paintings or, or drawings or anything again that you didn't get to see um, closely enough? Or did you want to see any additional views of any of the art that I have already shown? So let me know if there's anything that you'd like for me to kind of show again. And I can always go back to back to it. So also, you know, I do hope to show in galleries again. Like I said, I've shown in 13 states. I've had work at the United Nations headquarters. I've won a lot of um, national awards back in my college days, back when I was competing for not only scholarships, but also for um, national awards. So <clears throat> I showed in... Arkansas, I showed in Savannah, Georgia, I showed in New York, I've showed in a lot of different states and 
won like visitors choice awards as well as um different you know first second third place type of awards so i'm actually exhibiting um so you want to see the, somebody said the ones behind me so the abstracts um so i'm actually going to be in the rochester um the Rocco, so Rochester, I think it's called the um, Community Arts Foundation or whatever. So it's in, in Rochester, New York, and Rochester Contemporary Arts um, Gallery or Museum. So this is Silver Lining is the title of this one. This one is titled Gray Matter. I don't think I really showed that one very closely. Um, yeah, the blue one actually has like little, can you, I don't know if you can really see, but there's like a shimmer on the, there's a metallic paint uh, shimmer and it has some astrological signs. Like there's the Scorpio sign and the Gemini sign as far as star symbols um, with the metallic silver paint. So that one is kind of, it's kind of cool in those ways. Um, <clears throat> the one, Roland says he likes the one with the, the three cats and three kites and the fish reading a book. Yeah, it's kind of, I always see like a thumb sticking out right here on this section. It's almost like a, a Dr. Seuss type of thing. I don't even really know what I was thinking when I was making this one. It was kind of, when I do abstract work, I sort of take myself outside of my head, you know, because I'm very analytical and always overthinking everything. So. Um, the abstract pieces are kind of a little bit more free and I just try not overthink anything while I'm creating those. So, um, so silver lining, I believe right now is 900 on my website. Everything was discounted in the month of April and, you know, I still would honor some of those prices if you didn't realize that it was going to be the sale is going to be ending on May 1st. So, um, but yeah, I believe that this one is 900 on the website and it's a nice big piece. Like all of these, um, 16 by 20 pieces are larger. This particular one is in, of course, a frame as is the, the made for error piece. And so this is an 11 by 14. This is an eight by 10, just to give you an idea of size. Um, and then these pieces over here are 12 by 12. So let me just scroll back. I think I missed some more comments. <laughs> um, how much for Silver Lining, the documentary? Um, yes, I did change my name. I changed my name actually in 2016 and the documentary came out in 2018. I know a lot of people are kind of just discovering it right now, which is totally understandable with the whole coronavirus. Um, so I changed my name in 2016 and it's still changed. I still am in Keiichi Diallo, uh, you know, as my legal name. I actually just keep my public name, Rachel Dolezal, because I want all of my art collectors from the past, from, you know, the 1990s, people who purchased my art. Even when I was married, I actually changed my middle name to Dolezal, so it was Rachel Dolezal Moore, so that some of my art collectors could keep, you know, kind of follow my artwork. So it's kind of like a trade name or a pen name right now for my art, my book, my social media. And it also gives me a little way of separating my public life from my private life. And so that if I'm, you know, at a kid's appointment or whatever, I can have, you know, my legal name and my private name, but not necessarily, um, you know, like somebody calling out like Rachel Dolezal is next, you know, for, <laughs> to see the doctor, you know, or whatever. So, um, because so many people know that name, it's, it's got kind of like a, uh, stigma as well. And so I want to keep the controversy with the Rachel Dolezal name and not necessarily, um, you know, we'll see in the future if at some point I feel accepted and included enough in society to bring my legal name to the forefront of my public life. And I think um, part of that decision is just that I don't want any mockery or criticism or controversy to really be associated with my legal name. 
um, because it's very special to me because it was given to me from the Igbo tribe in Nigeria and I want to, it's, it's kind of sacred. So um, yeah, that's just a little bit about, <laughs> about my name. Funny enough, and Keiji Diallo and Rachel Dolezal have the same, um, I've been told they have the same numerology. So it's almost like, you know, you can never, you know, you know it's the same person. Um, I go by either, and that may not make sense to anybody else, but it makes sense to me to do that private public separation. So um, thank you, Francie, for the compliment about my use of shapes and color. Um, <laughs> sorry that your Wi-Fi is going in and out. That kind of sucks. Um, and yeah, thanks. I love the new name too. And Keiichi is short for Keiichi Yuri, which if anybody has read Things Fall Apart, that, that name in Keiichi is in that book as well. Um, you know, it means gift from God or gift from the gods. And when that name was given to me, there was a statement from the Igbo tribe that <clears throat> we recognize you as a high frequency Nubian spirit that is incarnated into a white envelope in this lifetime in order to traumatize white supremacy spiritually. So it kind of was almost like a life mission statement or a summary of the different aspects of my spirit and mind and body. And I just, you know, it felt good to be understood in that way. And so um, that's why I adopted that name. And, um, you know, I kind of feel like it's a little bit different to name yourself versus if somebody gives you a name. And that was a, a name that was given to me that I felt um, described me better than the name that I received at birth. So anyway, um, <clears throat> well, thank you all for being here with me today. I know it's been uh, a little bit over an hour. So if there are no other questions about the artwork, I think I'm gonna try and wrap things up and go check on Langston one more time because he is um, you know, doing his thing with the water outside. Basically he's flooding the uh, backyard while I am here on, on a live YouTube video. So it's still early in the evening here. I know on the East Coast, you guys are probably headed more towards bedtime. Um, so it's a little after seven here, but thank you so much for hanging out with me. Hopefully you got to drink more wine than I did because I clearly was talking almost the entire time. So um, I would love to visit India. Thank you for the invitation. Um, that sounds amazing. Once all of this pandemic ends and people can travel again, I also um, really want to to get Isaiah back home because he's in the UK and he had, you know, the travel ban kind of is a little scary because hopefully he can fly home when he's done with his master's degree. Um, so somebody said that you have a question. Um, okay, about lockdown. Yes, uh, we are doing okay in lockdown. We have been healthy, we've been safe. Um, it's been driving us crazy like everybody else as far as just trying to cope and do our best. And, um, you know, it's tough. It's really tough, especially for Franklin as a senior and especially for Isaiah because he has not touched another human being in like six weeks. I mean, it's like he's kind of quarantined in his um, graduate housing at the University of Manchester in a room. You know, it's like he has four walls and um, that's really hard for him. So we try and video chat and things like that, but I'm worried about him and worried about Franklin, trying to keep him up and positive and um, keep little Langston occupied and happy. And then yes, um, <laughs> there's me, but I'm used to staying home. I'm used to trying to avoid people because I've been doing that for five years <laughs> um, since not having a job. So I guess I guess it's kind of just a, a little extension and a new twist on on my, my little life routine here at home. But I do miss my hair clients. That was kind of my social life is, you know, engaging with my hair clients and I do miss that. So um, I think there's something that everybody's going through right now. Whatever you're going through, I hope that, you know, you just keep pressing forward because this is one long tunnel that we are gonna get through. At the end of the tunnel, there is some light. It will be over someday and um, you know, we can, we can definitely, 
hopefully come out of our little reclusive situations and um, eat together again and have events again and things like that. So um, yeah, it's definitely been tough on the kids and it's been tough on me to some extent, but my main focus is making sure they're okay. And um, once again, thank you so much for spending your evening with me. And I hope that uh, this has helped you kind of, you know, see my art a little bit more in a 3D sense and to kind of see, um, you know, what I have available currently. We are planning on relocating, hooray! <laughs> Finally, after <laughs> Franklin graduates. We still don't know exactly what the graduation plan is, but we're waiting to find that out. Once he's graduated, then we will be able to um, relocate as he goes to college. So I'm looking forward to that. And I do want to um, sell as much art as possible before we relocate so I don't have to move a bunch of art with us. So if there's anything that you see that you're kind of going like, uh, you know, I don't know if I can quite afford the price. Um, I am open to, you know, making a couple payments or if you want to make me an offer, <laughs> you know, all I can, in worst case scenario, I can just say no, but um, if there's a reasonable offer out there for a piece, definitely I would consider it. So don't be, you know, don't hesitate to just reach out if there's anything that kind of piques your interest that you might be interested, you know, might, might be wanting to bring into your, your own space um, for fine art. And ultimately fine art is an investment and it's unlike shoes, it will increase in value the day after you buy it. So, um, and one day when I pass away, it will go way up in value. So <laughs> um, that's the, I guess the good news in a way, um, artists kind of enjoy a little bit of immortality in that sense of like your art continues to live after you're gone. So. I do hope that people investing in my art understand that I do take a lot of archival considerations um, into mind when I'm creating. And because I have a master of fine arts degree that does help with the creative process, making sure that, that your investment is secure and that that art piece will last for generations. So um, anyway, I want to just scroll quickly to see if there was any other, you know, inquiry that I need to answer. And yes, we need to be sanitizing, <laughs> of course. And I make sure to sanitize all of the packages outgoing. So, um, you know, and some people are kind of recommending if you do order something online, just let that package sit for a couple days before opening it. If that makes you feel a little bit safer or just make sure you wash your hands after opening that box um, going through the postal service. So anyway, I'm gonna sign off. Thanks again for joining me. And this will be uh, recorded on my YouTube channel. So you can always rewatch it if you want to go back and look at any of those pieces. I will do one last little, little walk through the lighting has kind of changed just a little bit since we started uh, because the sun is going down here. And I do apologize for this uh, lighting situation because it's not a fancy gallery where you have the best lighting, but definitely um, I think you can see everything pretty adequately. So once again, thanks so much for joining my live art tour and I will be back with another video in the future.